Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Today, what I want to talk about is the most underutilized benefit of networking. And if you are like most people, you embark on networking in hopes of tapping into referrals or other sources of immediate business. When people reach out to me, generally, that's what they're looking for is they, you know, hey, I need to get networked. Can you help me get networked? I, you know, maybe they want to get a job or they want to get, you know, something, but it's something that is, can be somewhat measured monetarily um, in the short term or the immediate term. And that's what they think about when they think about networking. That's what most people think about when they think about networking. And that's why a lot of people will say, I really don't network. Um, because they're not in a sales position. I'm not in a sales position. I'm kind of a support person. So networking is not important to me. Network, getting out and meeting people is, is not important. Um, and, and certainly that's good. I'm not downplaying the notion of referrals and, and other sources of immediate business, you know, introductions that you know, lead to referrals. That's, that's important really it's it's a it's a vital part of being successful and certainly it's a very useful way to use your use your networking it's i mean it's 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 the most effective way of getting business referrals um networking into referrals and when you're getting referrals it's 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 got its roots in networking and the relationships that you've built it's so it's the most effective means of business and it's really the least costly form of generating sales long term and we could kind of go in and go go through the numbers but when you develop relationships and you have referral partners out there um assuming you're building that relationship and have built that relationship and you know certainly you're grateful tying into last week uh, in the appropriate ways those relationships will continue to pay and continue to pay and continue to pay um, dividends to you. And, um, you know, it's, it's really not costing you anything but time. It's just, you know, it's a relationship. I'm not downplaying time. Time is important. But, you know, you can you can leverage a lot of relationships and have a lot of people out there working in the background for you. But while referrals and other immediate sources of business are important to networking, there is a very underutilized benefit of networking, I find. And let me tell you a, a, a quick little uh, story. Well, it's not even a story. It was a it was a study that uh, um, I I read in a book called The Living Company um, by Ari DeGuy. But anyhow. Um, they talk in the book about the UK and that in the early part of the 20th century, the early part of the 1900s, if you will, the uh, United Kingdom, much well, probably the United States as well, had a system of delivering milk door to door. And they would bring the milk and they would put it on your doorstep and then you would come out and, and get your milk. I, I assume it wasn't cold. Milk doesn't come out of a cow cold. Um you know, putting milk in a fridge is kind of uh, just, you know, something that's, well, it's a modern sort of a thing. You didn't do it when you didn't have refrigerators. Um, And uh, so we've obviously made some advances with respect to milk and delivery and uh, sanitation and all that stuff. But anyhow, they would bring the milk and they would just put it on the doorstep and they would be in glass bottles. And they didn't, uh, they didn't mix up the milk, homogenation, you know, so you had the cream and the cream would, would rise to the top. It was, they weren't separating. It was just whole milk and the cream would rise to the top. And these containers, these glass containers didn't have caps on them. And so what would happen is, is that birds would, would get on the containers and they would, you know, dip their heads in and pull the bits of fat that were rising from the top, the cream that was rising to the top. That's where, uh, the saying comes, cream rises to the top. 
And, um, and obviously that's not a very, one, it's not very sanitary to have birds pecking at your milk. Um, number two, they're basically taking a lot of the nutritional value of the milk. And so what the milk industry did is they put aluminum caps, just really thin aluminum caps on, on, on the bottles. And um, I like to say it, it foiled the birds, a uh, little pun there, pun intended. Uh, it foiled the birds from getting at the cream. And um, that worked for a bit. Um, it, it worked for a bit. In time, birds figured out how to pull the caps off. But it wasn't all the birds that did it. It wasn't all the birds. There was a particular type of bird that was very, um, very effective in getting the caps off, the whole species. And that was the, the titmouse, the titmice. Um, and one by one, they figured it out and they would pull the caps back and they would get at the, you know, get at the cream. Um, but th there was another bird, the robins, that never were, you know, widely successful getting the caps off. And um, it just, they just won't. And if you, if you go look these birds up, they're very similar in size. Um, you know, the titmice are not, I think they're probably a little smaller than, uh, than red robins, uh, actually. Um, but it's not this huge disparity where one is just a giant bird and just ripping the cap off. I mean, they're basically about the same size, same structure, same everything. And um, so they started to really look at this. Obviously, they're trying to figure out, okay, you know, I need, we need to get these birds out of the milk, if you will. Um, and they and they took other, well, obviously, most people buy in the store anymore. But I remember as a kid, we had milk delivered and uh, it went into a into a bin. Um, and actually, the you know, the bin was somewhat insulated. Um, I don't know how long that lasted. But I do remember as a kid growing up near Chicago, Illinois, that uh, for a time we had milk delivered. Um, kind of dating myself, aren't I? Um, but at any rate, they started looking at this. Why was one species of bird so successful and the other species, the robins, not successful? And what they determined is, is it's really in the socialization of the birds. Robins are a very solitary bird. They're very territorial. Um, you'll be, you know, if there's a, you know, a robin, he'll chase other robins out of the um, I guess his, her territory of its territory, get my pronouns straight here. Um, he'll, you know, chase the other robins out. This is my territory. Stay away. Whereas the titmice weren't like that at all. Titmice are very social. They might be in flocks of uh, outside of mating season, mating season. They obviously they're, they're paired up into twos. Um, but Outside of mating season, there might be in flocks of 12 to 20 birds. And so what's happening is, is that one bird has figured out how to get the cap off and somehow, some way has communicated to other birds, this is how you do it. And the, that information just proliferated through the entire species and was just shared and shared and shared. And so... I look at that as a great example of the most underutilized benefit of networking, and that is sharing information, using our networks to find things that help us advance ourselves. And a, a perfect example of this, this is all going to get very circular, if you will. Back on February 8th, I was participating in a, a monthly call, a monthly Zoom call that I, I put on called the Networking Hub. And we go into breakout rooms and I'm prone to ask for things in the breakout rooms that, um, you know, generally people are asking for big things. I want a client. Um, and what I try to coach people is don't always ask for the big things. What are the little things you need to advance your business? What's informa What's the information that you might need to help advance your business? And ask for those little things because the little things piece together into something bigger. And so uh, February 8th and the networking hub, and I'll share some information on that in, in a second. Um, but the networking hub, uh, on the networking hub, I asked, you know, I want to do a LinkedIn live. Um, I heard these things are, you know, are a great way to share content like I'm sharing right now. And I want to learn how to do it. And there were a couple of people who said, 
you know, well, James Van Proyen, who's a big podcaster, he said, you know, I would love to learn with you. Let's learn together. Uh, and he helped me. And there were a couple other people who just, you know, came forward and said, I know somebody who does these things and they will help you. And sure enough, you know, it was it was not uh, it didn't ha happen as quickly as I would have liked. It took like two weeks. Um, I'm a little slow. Perhaps that's that's the thing. But but my point is, is that the network helped me gather the information to make this a reality in rather short order. And this is, you know, these lives, which I repurpose into podcast episodes, um, is just an extension of that podcast and the information I share on there. And that all came out of networking as well. Just, you know, tapping into the people I know is actually my daughter. Hey, can you help me get this information? Can you help me pull one of these things together? Uh, and sure enough, she was able to do that. And then uh, I was moving along. I was probably 20 episodes into that particular uh, phase of podcasting. And somebody said, you should interview people. I'm like, oh, OK. Um, I got to climb, climb another learning curve. You know, just what did I do? I reached out to my network to find out how I could, you know, climb my learning curve. You know, and then as, you know, or a, a learning curve, as this has continued along, as these lives have continued along, I've talked to other people who do it and we're all just sharing information. Hey, have you thought about doing this? Um, you know, here's how you promote this to get more people attending. Or here's how, you know, um, listed on Eventbrite, do this, do that. And so there's just constant sharing of information. And it really is an under, utilized uh, form or, or outcome uh, benefit of networking, if you will. And I'll, I encourage people to get out, go to your, you know, go hang out with, with colleagues, people who do the same thing you do. People are, for the most part, people are willing to share. Certainly if you get into, uh, if you get into settings where people are really not competing with one another, I mean, you're not going to have a uh, a meeting of all the little local insurance agents. Um, well, you might, but you know, but if you go to a national conference, you'll start picking up all sorts of ideas. I've talked to realtors who go to real estate conferences and they're going into other cities and they're learning just tons of information from other realtors. Um, they're not competing with one another, not not really, but they're all trying to help one another. They're trying to help the industry, legal profession, same thing. You know, when I was practicing law, I got a lot of great help from other attorneys. Um, I remember one of the first cases that I, well, one of the very, very few cases that I ever tried in court uh, when the case was over um, and I lost, uh, but the opposing counsel, he pulled me aside and he shared with me a book that I should be reading so I would be better. I was just floored. I'm like, oh, why would you do this? Um, didn't you just like beating me? Um, and he was like, no, I just want to make, you know, he wanted to just make the profession better. He wanted me to succeed. He wanted me to have that information. So as you think about your networking, as you think about your networking, think about asking for the information that you need. And I know we get fixated on we need that next client. We need that next sale. But really kind of dial down and ask yourself, okay, what are some things that can help me get that next client or that next sale? Maybe it's doing a LinkedIn Live. Maybe it's, you know, coming up with, you know, a better way of talking about your business. You know, I don't know, you know, you have to ask that for yourself, but then you reach out to your network and get information on those sorts of things to help push you along because that just makes you more effective than when you ultimately get the referrals that you're looking for. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.